Hi, I'm Dr. Cindy Dupuy. I have a PhD in learning disabilities and I do diagnostic evaluations, a little bit of intervention and advocacy for families that have done evaluations with me. I'm also an adult with dyslexia and dysgraphia. Hi, my name is Kim Sherman. I am a reading and writing remediation specialist and I've worked the last 15 to 20 years with my own daughter and many students from kindergarten through college. Excellent. So we see that WISC or the Western Learning Intelligence Scale for Children is one of our most popular videos. And in looking at it, I realized we've never done this really basic thing, which is how was the IQ score calculated? Now, Kim, you've read enough of these. Do you know which or how the IQ score is calculated on the WISC? Well, it is a combination of all the different sub pieces of the IQ score um, combined together. Um, and then it's compared on some big chart with the age of the student and the exact age of the student. You compare it against the rest of the population of the world. And sometimes you have to Jerry, not Jerry rake, but sometimes you have to upgrade the score a bit based on some of the disabilities that the student has that Okay, no, I, so not sorry. quite. So, um, so IQ scores, like the IQ score is based off the various subtest scores. And so the IQ scores are only based on the current population that you're in. Okay. So in other words, there's actually a whisk for um, China and Hong Kong. There's wow. actually a whisk for Asia and New Zealand. Okay. Because there are culturally based items on the test that are only relevant in the United States. So for example, on the information subtest here, um, there, there are questions that are specific to the United States. I did not know that. So they are different per country and the culture. They are different per country. Next, um, when you calculate IQ, yes, you're looking up the norms. Uh, we've talked about a general ability index score, which is a separate computation. That's in another video that's been viewed a couple times, um, which is a slight understatement. But the, the more important thing is, how do you actually calculate the IQ in the first place? So as a parent, you actually have the ability to have this cover page on the protocol copied or actually take it with you when your kid has been evaluated, okay? So this front page here is not copyrighted per se. So you as a parent can ask them to give you a photocopy of this front page. Either your okay. private evaluator or your school that's doing the evaluation can give you a copy of this. So when you say them, you're referring to either the school psychologist or your own person that you pay to to do an outside diagnosis. Yes, evaluation. Mm -hmm. uh, the the clinician doing the outside of evaluation may or everybody pretty much goes, oh, I can't do that. And the answer is, well, yes, you can, because you're not divulging anything that's actually on the test. And they actually make the front page one that can be torn off so that it can be shared. So, so every parent should have this if they have, they can had have this. Them. Absolutely. But you should okay. all have this. Okay, got it. But it's actually on our website. So if if you don't have it, you can go to our website, you can download it, and you can write your kids' scores in. So there's nothing particularly special. So it's available. If you go to Explaining Dyslexia, the website for this, this is available. So you can just download it. Okay. So now... The one thing that you're not going to have is the raw scores, okay? So when the clinician, if you if you don't get a copy directly from the clinician and you've just got your diagnostic report, the diagnostic report is going to have the scores for the conversion, but won't necessarily have the raw scores. Does that kind of make sense? Well, the report that you receive, it won't have the raw scores, but will you... So it, you will not have all the very specific information yeah, the, of each particular subset or will you have the scores of the subset? You will have the, the scaled scores for each subtest. Okay. But if, and that will come in the report, but 
typically, unless you get this cover page, you're not going to see the raw scores. I'm going to tell you, I always want to see as much of the raw data as possible. And again, scaled scores means the comparison against your age group. Very good clarification. Excellent. Yeah. You that, learned this. Get yeah, to be I a pro at this. Okay. So when you look at this, you will notice that right here, there are a set of boxes that do not have parentheses. Okay, you're looking at me like I don't quite No, I got it. it. Okay, good. So do you know what the difference is? I, I'm trying to remember if the one the ones with the parentheses aren't the substitution ones, or are they the substitution? They ones? are of ones that can be used for substitution. So let's say you were in the middle of block design, which is putting the blocks together to look like a design, and the um, fire alarm went off and you just destroy the subtest because the kid's in the middle of working one of them and there's really no way to recover it, you can then go in and substitute one of the alternative visual spatial subtests to make up for the spoiled block design. Okay? So you only want to do that in the most extreme cases. Is it often done or not really? Yeah, uh, it's typically not done. It's rarely okay. done, okay? The other reason you might substitute is, let's say you have an individual that has cerebral palsy and yes. they don't have good hand coordination. If they were attempting to do block design, we would be measuring their hand coordination versus their ability to do that part whole, whole part relationship, right? How do I actually build it? Okay, right. so it gives you options to substitute other subtests in. However, those substitute subtests are not as robust in the calculation of a full scale IQ as the other subtests are, which is Good why idea. we try and stay with the basic seven. Okay. Does that kind of make sense? Yep, the basic seven, got it. Okay, so you would come in, your student's name would be written up here. I've taken that out. Um, but your, your student is going to have the various subtest scores written in here. And I'm just writing them in by hand. Um, and let's give this one a six. And coding will give a six. And vocabulary, we might give an 11. And then you'll notice that visual puzzles, picture span, and symbol search um, are have the white blocks but also have the par the parentheses over here, okay? So the reason that they have the white blocks is if I want to com compute the visual spatial index score, I have to have both subtest scores in that area to calculate that index score. And an index score means that particular category or what do you mean by index yes. score? Yes. So for example, the verbal comprehension, which you will see in the administration of a standard WISC because it includes two subtests, is a combination of similarities and vocabulary. So you would have a score of 23 here, and then you would go up and you would look up the index score to do that computation. So again, right here where you've got this delineation, you cannot calculate a visual spatial index score for this student unless you administer one of the optional subtests. So you always need two scores to do a visual index score. I mean, an index score. On this particular test, yes. you need two subtests to calculate that index score. On other measures, so for example, on the C top, the phonemic awareness yeah. for older students, you get three subtests to calculate oh. an index score. Okay. On the Pfeiffer's, the FA, the FAR, the FAM, you can have four, five, or six subtests to calculate an index score. Okay. So each diagnostic test is somewhat different. On the WACE, which is the adult version, 
verbal comprehension is computed af off of three subtest scores. But it sounds like sometimes they don't always do an index score on things like uh, fluid reasoning, I mean, not fluid reasoning, on um, work. working memory, processing speed. But why wouldn't they always do an index score on those? Well, you can't unless you administer the additional subtest. Right, but I mean, isn't it their duty to always administer this, the All additional? All required by law, and I for oh. one as well, is to just administer the seven subtests needed to calculate a full-scale IQ. So we is would a parent allowed here. to go back and say, hey, I would like the index scores on these two additional categories? Sure, you can ask for it. Okay. Most school psychologists have so much on their plate that unless they're doing it in the moment, having them go back and retest is difficult. So you as a parent, when your child is going to be evaluated, you need to say, hey, can you please make sure you do the full working memory and the full processing speed and the full visual spatial on my child when you do the IQ test? Can you do all 10 subtests? I would like the working memory score. I would like the processing speed score. I would like the visual spatial score. Okay. So that is a parent's right to ask for that. You can ask for it. School district doesn't have to do it, but normally if you ask for it, like we're not talking hours here. Like the picture span is probably 10 minutes. Visual puzzles is 10 to 15 minutes. Symbol search is literally three minutes. If you as a parent are suspicious about your child's working memory, which means your ability, well, maybe you can say it better than I, or processing speed, like you really do want a more in-depth testing of those. An example of working memory, can you just give a quickie? Sure. Working memory is the ability to take information in, do something with it, and spit it back out. So if I said, hey, Bob had six cookies, he ate two, how many cookies does Bob have left? That is a working memory task. I see. Also a working memory task is I'm going to read you a sentence and I want you to remember the last word in each sentence is order, in order. So if I said, uh, do, do you like cats? Um, have you gone for a run today? Uh, do you like to sleep in a bed? Mm -hmm. And then I say, tell me the last word in each sentence in order. That's that would memory. be a working memory task. And then processing speed is you can have a really bright student who just can't pull the information as quickly as other students. So the the it's not pulling the information quickly. It's working as quickly as other students do. So if okay. you have a low processing speed, so we've talked about this, that the coding subtest, often you'll see a significant difference between coding and symbol search. And we'll talk about that more in another video. But that can also give you hints as to what's going on with the student. Okay. Yes. So we have now put all the subtest scores in here for the ones that we've mocked up, right? So we've got 22 plus um, 20, because 6 plus 6 plus 8 is 20. And then we've got 21. And then we add those up all together and you have got 63, okay? So that 63 comes down here for the full scale IQ. Mm -hmm. And then that clinician would go look it up in their magic book, which has got all the norms in it and then plug it in. Okay. Okay. Um, and we talked before like the, since you have to do both for the fluid reasoning, you would have an 18 there. They would put the 18 in here and then they would look those numbers up. Okay. Does, that, does that make sense? Yes. So okay. it's only those seven subtests, That's whatever it. those scores are, that come down here and it's those adding those seven subtest scores up and it's kind of the average of them that then gives you the full scale IQ. Okay, good. And every parent sense. has the right to have this cover sheet with information in it. Yes. And this, and if the school says, but you've got the information in the report, you'd say, I would still like to see how the computation is done. Um, because one of the other things that you can do 
um, is you can go in and you, they have this very nice little graph here. You can graph your student's performance on various subtests, which can begin to help you understand what might be going on, why your kid has kind of an unusual profile or what might be really different about their profile. So we might have a coding subtest score of seven and a symbol search of 11. And you look at that and go, wow, that's a really big jump. Mm -hmm. That makes you ask more questions. And that then I would say, go look at what is the coding subtest on the WIST tell us. Video. Okay. Okay. Yep. So again, if you don't have this, you go to our website, you can download it, not a big deal. And then you can graph all this information and always feel free to ask the clinician who is administering the test to do all 10 subtests if there's other specific information you would like. Excellent. Questions or comments, please send them along. We're, we're happy to take your feedback and create videos off of this. Thank you.